Hello, my name is Katherine Schlosser. I'm going to be discussing CT volumetric analysis of hernia patients. These are our disclosures. The impact of obesity on hernias is well established. Obese patients are more likely to develop hernia after abdominal surgery. They also have worse outcomes after hernia repair, including in a, it, uh, with higher rates of wound infection and recurrence. These adverse outcomes are theorized to be multifactorial, including an association of intra-abdominal pressure with hernia recurrence and abdominal wall thickness with postoperative wound infection. Specific fat distribution has been associated with specific outcomes. Intraabdominal fat with intraabdominal pressure and hernia recurrence. Hernia volume with postoperative respiratory failure and hernia recurrence. And subcutaneous fat specifically with surgical site infections. The aim of this study was to identify the association of fat distribution specific to patients and outcomes after open ventral hernia repair. For this purpose, we queried our prospective single center hernia database for patients undergoing open ventral hernia repair with available CT scans within one year of their operation. We then performed a three-dimensional analysis of these CT scans. Based on prior literature, we measured intra-abdominal, subcutaneous, and hernia fat from the diaphragm to the pubic symphysis. This is an example. In blue, you see the patient's subcutaneous fat with a total volume of 9.8 liters. In green, the total abdominal volume, including hernia and intra-abdominal, is 5.6 liters. In orange, you see that this patient's hernia volume was 1.4 liters. We identified 1,178 patients with available CT scans. Nearly 60% were women, and many were comorbid, including diabetes, history of smoking, and COPD. 8.5% had a history of previous MRSA infection. We then performed CT volumetric analysis. Mean hernia volume was one liter, intra-abdominal volume four liters, and subcutaneous fat volume almost seven liters. Mean defect area was 150 centimeters squared in this cohort. 26% of cases were contaminated, and more than half of contaminated cases had mesh infections and or fistulas. 10% of patients did not achieve fascial closure. In grossly contaminated cases, mesh was often not placed, or a bridging biologic mesh was placed in anticipation of a reoperation. 6.4% of patients did not have mesh placed. These patients usually had a grossly contaminated case where primary fascial reapproximation could be performed. Overall recurrence rate, including in the contaminated, bridged, and non-mesh cases, was 11%, with a reoperation rate of 20% and a 30-day readmission rate of, 30, of 13%. Here we get into the statistics. Given the high degree of overlap between markers of hernia dimensions and fat distribution, we performed what's called a principal component analysis. This allows us to combine variables with high correlation, such as BMI and subcutaneous fat, into single composite variables we can then use for analysis. Each principal component is used as a surrogate for closely related variables. The loadings across the bottom, called eigenvectors, signify the magnitude of the association of each new variable with each original variable. So for example, the principal component we titled hernia PC accounts for 38% of vari variance within this data. It consists primarily of hernia volume, defect size, and the ratio of hernia volume to intra-abdominal volume. The principal component titled EAVPC, or extra abdominal volume PC, consists primarily of subcutaneous fat and BMI. And finally, the principal component titled IIV is consisting mainly of intra abdominal volume. When combined across the bottom, these three principal components account for 85% of variance in our sample and therefore are good markers of these interrelated variables. We first performed a, a univariate analysis associating these principal component uh, variables with outcomes of interest. Looking at operative intervention, we found that hernia PC, which consists primarily of hernia dimensions, was associated with component separation, paniculectomy, fascial closure, and operative time. 
When we examined outcomes, we found that hernia PC was, PC was most consistently associated with all outcomes of interest. Extra-abdominal volume and intra-abdominal volume PC were associated with wound complication and readmission, but not with the other outcomes, uh, not with most of the other outcomes we were looking at. We then performed a multivariate analysis controlling for the three principal component variables, hernia, extra-abdominal, and intra-abdominal, sex, diabetes, tobacco use, a, a consistent use of steroids, a history of previous hernia repair, the number of previous abdominal surgeries these patients had had, the, the contamination of their case, and the placement of mesh. Hernia PC, which was composed primarily of hernia dimensions um, and ratio of intra-abdominal to hernia volume, was associated with performance of a paniculectomy, component separation, and fascial closure. Extra-abdominal volume PC was associated with panicule paniculectomy, but with neither of the other factors. Female sex was also associated with paniculectomy and achievement of fascial closure, and a history of previous repair was also associated with paniculectomy and component separation. When assessing outcomes of surgery, we found that hernia PC was associated with reoperation, readmission, and wound complication. Extra abdominal PC, which reflects subcutaneous fat volume, was associated with readmission and wound complication. Female sex was associated with readmission and wound complication, and a history of prior repair was associated with double the rate of recurrence. Contamination was associated with adverse outcomes across the board, and mesh placement was protective of hernia recurrence. In conclusion, while BMI, BMI is a marker of adiposity, it is not a nuanced description of a patient with a hernia. The primary marker of adiposity and influencer of outcomes are the hernia dimensions, here represented by the variable hernia PC, and if you recall, that includes defect area hernia volume and the ratio of intra-abdominal, I'm sorry, of hernia volume to intra-abdominal volume. This variable is associated with performance of paniculectomy and component separation and is negatively associated with fascial closure. It is significantly associated with readmission, reoperation, wound complication after hernia intervention. Subcutaneous fat and BMI do impact outcomes to a lesser degree, including an association with wound complication and readmission. This is a more nuanced and more accurate description of patient adiposity, as a specific location and distribution of fat in the obese patient will differently impact outcomes after open ventral hernia repair. Thank you very much.